I don't buy a rolling mill stand and then buy a separate PLC to run it with an OPC server and build a separate SCADA system like we do in lots of other discrete manufacturing processes. So for you guys, um, you know, the one that I like is SCADA's main things of controls and alarming. Um, thank you. Now I'm more, I understand PLC SCADA and DCS a little bit better. Can you help me, help me understand the difference a little bit better? So I'm gonna go ahead and explain a couple of elements of uh, SCADA PLC versus DCS, okay? So on the left-hand side here, I created a nice little chart, nice and pretty little. Um, this, is the, this is the architecture that most of you should be used to, right? You have sensors and field devices in the field. You've got sensors, you got motors, you got virtual frequency drives, you got flow control valves, you got all that stuff, right? They connect to a PLC. You know, most of you guys are probably working with either Siemens uh, S7 models or uh, Allen Bradley control logics or compact logics. They have IO cards where the, the sensors input into the IO cards, the output card outputs to your motor or your drive. And then you have a CPU running in the PLC that's running a program that is looking at the inputs and firing the outputs based on certain conditions. That's your automation, right? The way that that PLC the PLC generally talks to the outside world is not directly. It talks to an OPC server. So this would be something like Kepware in the middle. It could be a DAS ABC IP from Aviva. It, there, it could be Matricon OPC. There's lots of pieces of software that talk to this PLC. And it would talk to this PLC, this one specifically, if it's a Compact Logics, through an Allen Bradley communications driver. And then you would, all the software that wants to get the data from the edge, from the PLC, is going to get it through that OPC server. So you're going to also add in some third-party SCADA software. So this would be like Wonderware, this would be iFix, this would be Ignition, Factory Studio, all those things talks to the OPC server, okay? When you, when you install Wonderware or when you install Ignition or when you install any of the third-party SCADA platforms, they are blank. That is... All you have is a canvas to create a SCADA application. What SCADA is, is supervisory control and data acquisition. It's where you manage a plant remotely, okay? It's not, SCADA is HMI on steroids. HMI is generally unique to a specific process or a partic particular line. SCADA kind of brings all, aggregates all that together into one interface where you're man managing all of your alarms. I can look at all of my alarm banners for the whole plant or my whole area. I can control the process. I can turn the process on. I can turn the process off. I can adjust set points from that SCADA software. But when that SCADA software gets installed, it is, it's blank. It's just a canvas. It's just an IDE. When the OPC server gets installed, it is blank. There are no channels or devices or tags configured. You have to engineer there. When that PLC gets installed, it is empty. You have to, most of the time, update the firmware running on the PLC. You got to configure each of these individual cards. And then you have to write your ladder logic or your sequential function chart or your function blocks to do your automation. All of this, think of it as off the shelf, right? It's, uh, um, it's like buying the wood. It's like buying the nails. And then you go in and hammer everything together, OK? On the right-hand side, what I have is DCS, OK? So this is the comparison to uh, SCADA, uh, this PLC SCADA structure, okay? One thing I wanna point out, this PLC connects to this OPC server over like ethernet IP, it's an ethernet network. And this third-party SCADA software also connects to the OPC software over like ethernet IP. So it's like an open, regular ethernet IP network. This is DCS, okay? So one of the things you have to understand about DCS is that distributed control systems care about two things above all else. They care about security and they care about speed, okay? You're gonna see a distributed control system in processes that generally are super, super, super fast. So like, you're never gonna go into a steel mill that has a rolling mill that is takes billets and reduces them down into rebar. You'll never see that being run by a standard PLC that just some engineer wrote a program on. It's too dangerous. It has to respond too fast, okay? You use a distributed control system because in a distributed control system, you have a controller. That controller has input and output 
uh, cards, okay? The, this controller rack, this is the brains of the system. It has an input cards, it has output cards, it talks to sensors and field devices, just like a PLC does. The difference is, is most of the time the DCS has pre-configured blocks inside of the DCS system. Not all DCS systems have this, but most do have pre-controlled blocks inside the system that are specific to certain processes. So say I, I have a, a tank, I have a tank object, or I have a, um, I have a rolling mill stand in a steel mill. There are, there are many DCS systems, ABB specifically, has objects inside of the controller that are designed specifically for certain rolling mill stands. Go ahead, Zach. You're on mute. This is, this is why some would say that plant packs for Rockwell's Automation's line of PLCs makes it DCS-like because they give you those pre-configured objects that map to their SCADA, that map to their PLC, that map to the real object, and you have that functionality like a DCS. Which is exactly what Rockwell was trying to accomplish when they created plant packs, okay? That's exactly what they're trying to accomplish. But the thing, I'm gonna to get to the thing that, that Rockwell was missing, okay? And that is Rockwell doesn't, have, doesn't use a field bus to talk across from PLC to PLC. Now they can, you can put field bus modules in, but that's natively, that's not how they talk. Okay, so I've got my, D, my DCS controller, but I also have DCS remote IO. I can have remote IO over here, remote IO over here for my PLC. I can have a PLC talk to a remote IO rack, but it's generally gonna do that over ethernet IP. It's gonna talk to the other rack through ethernet. This DCS controller in, in most DCS systems, actually basically every DCS system is speaking to the DCS Rio, the remote IO over field bus, which is blistering fast, okay? So imagine I've got a printing press where I've got a bunch of printing stands and they are all operating at a thousand feet per minute. Okay. And they're printing very detailed uh, um, images onto paper. Okay. The, when you, to get that register correct, that is to get it so that the, the inks all line up correctly and it, and it prints what it's supposed to print on the page. All of those stands have to work in unison very quickly super, super, super fast. So fast that you can't do it over a, a non-field bus network, okay? So DCS is super fast. Oh, the DCS controller always talks to the Rios over field bus, which can, which can process transactions sometimes as fast as three to five milliseconds, okay? In ethernet IP, you would never, you would never reliably expect the response faster than 25 milliseconds over ethernet IP, for example. The last piece, there's no OPC server between the DCS controller and the native DCS SCADA. So nearly all SCADA systems, DCS systems come with their own SCADA software. So whether I'm dealing with Delta V or whether I'm dealing with like an APB DCS, they have their own software packages which are designed for the objects, the pre-configured objects in the DCS system. But the controller talks to the SCADA system over the field bus network as well. So that means the SCADA software can control what's happening in the distributed control system much faster. When I make a change to a set point, it happens much, much faster than it does when I'm using third-party SCADA OPC server to PLC, okay? So there's a thing, there was a question that was asked about, you know, you said DCS systems are turnkey. What I, what I meant to say is that DCS systems are used much more frequently in turnkey solutions. So that is, I'm building a brand new steel rolling mill. I'm building a brand new printing facility. Um, and part of that implementation is installing a new uh, DCS system to control it. That is a turnkey solution. I don't buy a rolling mill stand and then buy a separate PLC to run it with an OPC server and build a separate SCADA system like we do in lots of other discrete manufacturing processes. Okay, so that's the fundamental difference. Okay, DCS is all, go ahead, Zach. Uh, I was gonna say after you finish, if you wanted to explain, cause most people like they're either in one world or the other, but it's interesting how you have been able to gather PLC and DCS experience. You know, you, you talked about the arc of your career. If you wanted to yeah. touch on that. Yeah, let me, yeah, that's the next question actually. So I'll, I'll touch on that in the very next question. 
which is a lot of people have asked this, hey, I love IIoT, I love Industry 4.0, what do I need to study so that I can do it? I'm gonna talk about that uh, next, okay? Um, I hope that clears up the DCS versus SCADA versus PLC thing. Distributed control systems are, the, there is a lot more of this on the left-hand side than there is on the right-hand side. You see the, the left-hand side architecture, the, the PLC to OPC server to SCADA to MES, a, much, much more than DCS. And one of the things that we're discovering is the people who have the DCS systems are having a lot more trouble digitally transforming, which is ironic considering that DCS systems are the one that come with, generally come with the native objects running on the edge. Okay, which, and if we wanted to do object-oriented IoT implementations, it should be much easier. Okay. All right, so that's question, answer to question number one.